Artemis, goddess of the moon hunting and archery. Artemis from her early years took pleasure in hunting and embracing nature, esteeming purity and freedom above all. Additionally, she was depicted as the protector of women. The fair and courageous huntress, Brutomartis, suffered torment at the hands of King Minos of Crete. Fleeing Minos's persecution for nine months, Brutomartis encountered Artemis who witnessed her suffering and intervened to rescue her. Artemis saved Brutomartis from the sea, blessing her and elevating her to a goddess revered on Olympus, the sea god Poseidon. He may be the younger brother of Zeus, but he's known as one of the big bosses of Olympus. Poseidon is the god who rules over the waves, living in his sea palace. But that's not all, even small ponds are within his domain. And beware when he's irritated, he can stir up storms and shake the earth. Yeah, because ancient Greeks believed that since the earth floated on the sea, a sea god could influence the land as well. When you imagine Poseidon, think of a giant muscular man. He sports a long beard, which is quite a sight. His face carries a powerful expression, with eyes emitting a strong gleam. Sometimes his hair is described as being blue. His skin seems to have been kissed by the sun, boasting a tone reminiscent of sea salt and wind. He travels riding a chariot drawn by bronze-hoofed horses with golden manes, exuding the full force of the sea. Originally the elder brother of Zeus, Poseidon became his sibling only after being swallowed by Cronus and later regurgitated. Quite a shocking turn of events, isn't it? And hold on, this man has been married three times. His wives include his grandmother Gaia, his sister Demeter, and finally, the beautiful Amphitrite. Thanks to this lineage, Poseidon further solidified his position as the king of the seas. Among his children, Triton and Albion are particularly famous. Triton wields a conch shell to calm the seas. While Albion is renowned for discovering Britain, Poseidon and spider goddess Medea's son, Halirotheus, attempted to assault Alcip, the daughter of Ares and his lover, the Amazon queen Hippolyta, but ended up slain by Ares himself. Enraged by this incident, Poseidon pressed charges against Ares, but despite the support of other gods like Athena, Hera, and Aphrodite, Ares emerged victorious in the trial. Poseidon's son, Eumolpus, engaged in a vicious attack on his great-grandfather, Erechtheus, and only managed to secure victory through a difficult sacrifice, offering his youngest daughter, Catanophil, as a sacrificial offering. Consequently, Eumolpus faced permanent exile and ultimately met his demise by a sword in Athens. Poseidon himself wielded considerable power, with rumors suggesting he nearly bested Zeus in the struggle for godly supremacy. His trident was rumored to rival Zeus's lightning bolt, making him unmatched in strength among the gods. Even in the Iliad, Zeus acknowledged Poseidon's might, warning of the considerable challenge in opposing him. Athena and Poseidon also competed for the favor of the citizens of Athens. Poseidon offered a saltwater spring, while Athena provided an olive tree. As the citizens preferred the olive tree, they chose Athena as their patron goddess. Enraged, Poseidon caused a flood that devastated the shores of Athens. Eventually, Zeus intervened, and it was agreed that Athens would honor both deities, with Athena being the second most venerated. Athena, the badass goddess of wisdom, war, and just about everything cool in ancient Greece. So Athena is no ordinary goddess. She's the daughter of Zeus, the king of gods, and Metis, the goddess of wisdom. But get this. Athena was born fully armed from Zeus's forehead. Now, Athena isn't just known for her brain. She's also a warrior goddess rocking a golden helmet and armor, handcrafted by her mom, Matisse. And she never goes anywhere without her Aegis shield, sporting the head of Medusa to freak out her enemies. Athena is the eternal virgin, swearing to remain pure forever. But she does have a sort of adopted son, Erichthonius, thanks to a weird incident involving Hephaestus. Long story short, Athena managed to turn a messy situation into a legend by raising Erichthonius, who later became a wise king of Athens. And when Arachne got too cocky about her weaving skills, Athena stepped in to teach her a lesson, turning her into the first spider. Aphrodite, known in Greek mythology as the goddess of love and beauty, this divine powerhouse is all about abundance, fertility and desire symbolizing the very cycle and essence of life. She's the original life influencer. Now, our girl Aphrodite wasn't just about looks. She had this magic girdle, 
the cestus, which basically made her irresistible. She rocked the golden tresses, sure, but these days it's all about beauty being in the eye of the beholder, right? As for her name, it's a head-scratcher with theories ranging from foam risen to a mix of ancient tongues. Now, her origin story? Total blockbuster material. According to the OG storyteller Hesiod, when Cronus tossed his dad Uranus's, a hem bits into the sea out popped Aphrodite from the frothy aftermath, and thus began her entourage with Eros and Himeros, marking her as the emblem of life and the grand force of Amor. Aphrodite and Ares, they were the OG power couple, keeping tabs on each other like nobody's business. When Aphrodite rolled with Adonis, a green-eyed Ares turned boar and went full-on Mortal Kombat. And let's not forget Hermes who fell head over winged heels for Aphrodite. Together, they mixed up the divine gene pool and brought us Hermaphroditus, a symbol of love's limitless forms. The Pygmalion Story A heart warmer where the Cypriot sculptor's ivory crush Galatea got the breath of life thanks to Aphrodite's blessing. Q, the created love and the creator vibes. Then, there's the gut-wrenching tale of Ephus and Anaxaret. He, the everyman smitten. She, the noble ice queen. Her cold shoulder led to tragedy, and Aphrodite's curse turned her to stone. A stark warning against love's cold shoulder. The Tannhäuser legend goes deep, with the wandering minstrel knight begging Venus for redemption. Rejected by the Pope, but saved by a sprouting staff, proving there's always hope for forgiveness. So Aphrodite, the goddess of love and beauty, was all about helping lovebirds find their groove. But she had a bit of a diva side too, you know? If someone dared to steal her thunder, she'd whip up some serious payback. And that's exactly what happened with this mortal chick, Psyche. I mean, she was drop-dead gorgeous like beyond supermodel status. Every Tom, Dick, and Harry from around the globe was drooling over her, totally forgetting about old Aphrodite. Her temples were gathering dust for crying out loud. So Aphrodite, feeling snubbed and all, decides to call in her wingman, Eros. She's like, Yo, make Psyche fall head over heels for the grossest, nastiest dude on the block. But here's the plot twist. Eros takes one look at Psyche and bam, he's smitten. Nah, I can't do it, Afro. Sorry, not sorry. But Psyche's life isn't all rainbows and unicorns. She's feeling lonelier than ever. So she hits up the Oracle of Delphi for some guidance. And you won't believe what the Oracle dishes out. She's like, Girl, head to this swanky palace. Your hubby's waiting there. Psyche's stoked, right? But there's a catch. Her mystery man only swings by after hours, and she's not allowed to peek at his mug. So she's living the high life in this palace, soaking up the sun in the gardens. But curiosity gets the best of her one night, and she pulls a sneaky move with an oil lamp. Turns out her dude is none other than Eros himself, but in her excitement Psyche fumbles the lamp, spilling hot oil on Eros. He's freaked out and bolts back to Olympus, slamming the door on their relationship. Talk about a buzzkill, Psyche, heartbroken, begs Aphrodite for another shot with Eros. But Afro's still salty about being upstaged, so she throws Psyche a curveball. She's like, Sure, sweetie, but you gotta fetch me some impossible thing from the underworld first. So off Psyche goes on this wild journey to the land of the dead, facing all sorts of creepy obstacles. She finally scores this golden box of beauty from Persephone, but curiosity strikes again, and she opens it up. Bad move, next thing you know she's out like a light in a deep sleep. Thankfully, Eros swoops in like a superhero, using his love arrow to wake her up. They have this epic reunion, and Zeus even hooks them up with a big fat wedding bash. Psyche scores the ultimate upgrade, becoming a goddess herself, with Eros by her side for eternity. And that's how love and soul became the ultimate power couple, with their kid Hadone spreading joy all over the world. Epic, right? Until next time, stay legendary.